Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt Lane, and welcome back to another episode of our weekly podcast with Jay Buston and myself. I'm surprised uh, you're still here. <laughs> surprised we're both still here. <laughs> no, I uh, met the audience. I met I met the oh, people oh. watching the video. I thought they'd click on it and be like, ah, never mind, and leave. <laughs> ah, I've already I've already heard this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, like uh, we've actually had a really really good feedback so far. Uh, a lot of very interesting answers to the questions of the day. Uh, that we've been doing it's been a lot of fun so far um, yeah. actually learned a lot have a lot of games on my list apparently that i have not played and i have to get on the ball about but uh <laughs> anyways if you're new to the podcast uh we're just talking about games gaming in general whether it be the games themselves or games that are coming out or consoles or just pre- pretty much anything involving gaming news whatsoever uh, we talk about a main topic for roughly five minutes and then a few games that are coming out for about two minutes and 50 seconds apiece. And that's really all there is to it. Um, yeah, Matt's really Matt's really tight with the budget that we have for the show. <laughs> um, so we couldn't spring the extra 10 seconds apiece to just round it out at three minutes. We could only afford two minutes and 50 seconds. Right, right. Because, <laughs> you know, we got that negative budget going on. Uh, <laughs> that's, what, that's what happens when you're an adult. Still and, still in the red, but we're, we're going to get to that black someday. <laughs> Well, we're waiting for the income for the Patriots winning the Super Bowl because, you know, we're supposed to be getting a, a stipend from all that, right? Because uh, John Boston. owes me $40, so. <laughs> so. Apparently so. All right, well, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the first topic of the day. Five-minute timer and go. Uh, it's going to be a game called For Honor. Um, and just to give you a little bit behind the scenes thing, uh, we'll be recording this right before it comes out. We kind of do a little bit of getting ahead of ourselves. That way we have a little room to work with, so. Uh, we don't know every single detail, but it will be out by the time this video goes live. So we're going to go ahead and talk about it right now. And Jay is actually going to talk a little more about this than I am because he's looked a little more into it. So go ahead. All right. So, yeah, like like Matt said, this game isn't actually out yet, but we can already tell you a couple of things about the launch of this game uh, just because it's by Ubisoft. So we know, first of all, it's not going to work um, <laughs> upon release. The game's just not going to work at all. <laughs> Um, and then when it does work, it's going to be buggy as all get out, and, Savage. <laughs> which is just not going to be a good idea because it's an MMO combat style thing. And you're going to have like your game's just going to freeze and you're going to die and it's going to be awful because it's Ubisoft and they're terrible. I didn't even think about um, that to this point. <laughs> Oh, that's so upsetting now. I hope that doesn't happen. In all seriousness, this game does not look that bad. Um, for those of you who are unaware, um, it's it's kind of been a hot button issue at the point of, of this recording because the free beta is going on right now. Um, and I took it upon myself to not play the free beta <laughs> because I don't really care about MMOs, to be honest that's with fair. you. I don't play World of Warcraft. I don't play Elder Scrolls Online. I like the games. I like I love the Elder Scrolls. I don't want to play it online with other people because that's just going to ruin your experience of it. <laughs> um, everyone's like, oh, Fallout should have an online game. No, no, it shouldn't. <laughs> um, but For Honor, um, it just kind of like... It seems like they're trying to push it to be the next, or not a next, but like a different Overwatch. Like, they're getting a strong online presence. They gave the game out to a bunch of YouTubers. They contracted a bunch of YouTubers to do a bunch of, and streamers too, to do a bunch of, like, promotional work for it, which is good. That says that, like, hey, we we trust the, that our game is going to be good enough to get us some positive press by releasing free copies of it. So actually the, the launch might not be so bad. Right, And acknowledging that putting it out there in the gaming community is the best way to get the actual PR for it, which was a good, good idea on their part. Certainly. Absolutely. Um, but it's, it's a combat game where you pick one of three factions. There's Vikings, there's Knights and then Samurai. Um, and I don't know why you would not pick Samurai out of those three, but that's, you know, <laughs> that's just my opinion. Uh, my best guess is they're going to do some sort of ridiculousness to where they make the samurai not have a lot of defense. <laughs> well, that's what I'm I'm kind of because we didn't like like I said, this game isn't out yet. I didn't play the beta. Um, and so I'm wondering if there are different like like are the Vikings strong but slow Are the knights kind of well rounded and the samurai is fast, but, you know, not necessarily have the most defense. I don't know about that. Um, I do know that within each faction, there's like different loadouts you can get. So it's not like every samurai player is running around with a katana. <laughs> you know, there's different kinds of armor. There's different weapons. Thank, um, thank goodness. You know how terrifying it would be to see like a plethora of like 200 <laughs> people rocking with freaking 
katanas. Yeah, you, just lo- you load into the game with your your medieval knight with your you know King Arthur shield and and knockoff of Excalibur, oh, and you gosh. just like turn around, wait for the game to load behind you because again it's a Ubisoft game, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden just this sea of katanas are just running at you, and you're just like, nope, I quit. Uh, I, I know this may not be a question we know the answer to. Do you, by chance, know roughly like how many people are going to be in a match? Um, I don't. I don't know that, and we probably should have looked that up. In all fairness, <laughs> um, but it, they make it look like it's a big battlefield. Like there's a lot of people. That it's not going to be focused on one on one, but it's going to be team based, and it's going to be. You know, you're going to have to be able to hold your own against two or three opponents while you're waiting for your team to stop dicking around and get back to you. But um, right. The trailer, the trailer definitely looked like there was a lot of people playing at once. Yeah. And so that's kind of cool. Um, I, I do like that. You know, this this is going to be a game where you're only going to succeed as much as your team works with you, you know, mm. <laughs> which is it's it's not because <laughs> th- there are some online games out there like Overwatch to an extent and uh, to a much bigger extent, like Team Fortress 2, where like even if you're on a team full of idiots, um, you can still usually have a pretty good time by yourself. Right. Um, but then there are other times there, there are other games like Overwatch, the rest of the time or like Splatoon on Nintendo Wii U, for example, um, where if you just don't have a good team, you're just not going to succeed. Um, so playing with friends is probably advisable um, on Discord or uh, something like that. I usually don't like using games built in chat systems. So but, you know, whatever works for you. Sure. Which uh I mean, with games like that, you probably typically don't want to play. Like, games like For Honor is probably not that... Well, I guess it depends on the person, but I know for me, it wouldn't be that fun by myself anyways. That'd be something I want to play with other yeah. people. But uh, that's exactly. that game. Like we said, it's going to be coming out uh, pretty soon, actually. It should be February 14th. For Well, it's already out at the, the time of this being posted. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. The date it came out should have been February 14th. Um, so if you haven't picked it up by this point, uh, and this is something you're interested in, you like that type of game. Yeah. If you're into that online competitive, um, type of thing, then, then this is going to be a great game for you. Yeah. It's definitely worth a look (laughs) at, at worst case scenario, but that's it for that game. Moving on to the games that are going to be coming out soon. Our first topic of the day, we'll go ahead and start the two minute 50 second timer is going to be Mass Effect Andromeda. Um, (laughs) it's kind of interesting that they actually chose to come out with another one because a lot of people were very unhappy after the end of Mass Effect 3. Uh, And I know Jay told me earlier he didn't really play any of the Mass Effect series, but um, imagine you're playing this game that the entire principle is you constantly having to work to save the Earth and keep it from destruction only for that to happen anyways at the end. <laughs> cool. So it's like most video games ever. It's like, okay, rescue the princess, but it doesn't matter. You're just going to get kidnapped anyway. Right. Uh, and, you know, normally I wouldn't talk about endings, but Mass Effect 3 has been out for a long time now. So if you're going to call spoilers, uh, you should, <laughs> I, can't, I can't really give anything for you on that one. But uh, Mass Effect 3, <laughs> it, it, pretty much every way you slice it, your character dies at the end of the game. Uh, I think there is literally one thing you can do to keep that from happening, but most of the time it happens anyways. But moving on, it, it's very surprising that they chose to go ahead and move forward because I kind of thought they had almost killed themselves after that, because there was so much backlash on it that they even went back and fixed it in the DLC to where that was not the way it ended. Did they really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was by that way. It was that bad. But uh this one, uh, it looks like the same stuff. You know, your your crew, your character are kind of exploring for potential areas that you can terraform whether you need it at the moment or not. The point is that, you know, at some point in time you might. And they kind of Based on the trailer for what we know so far, it looked like they kind of went a Star Trek route with it to where the personality that your character has seems to be very much like a captain from Star Trek kind of thing, where he's that cocky, uh, sassy kind of thing, to where even when like the villain was like facing around in front of him, he's just making jokes uh, kind of thing while being sassy and, of course, like, you know, very pretty boy visual. Um, and if you do a girl, I would assume it'd be the same thing, a very, like, a very attractive witty person uh, and essentially just based on what we know so far you know your your ship gets taken over 
uh, and things go south, <laughs> and that's kind of how the game proceeds from there, and it'll presumably be surviving that and keeping that from happening, and then I would assume keeping the people that captured you from destroying other things past that point um, would kind of be what we're going to be looking for there, but um, that's kind of it for Mass Effect Andromeda. I know we talked a little bit more about Mass Effect as a whole in that concept there but it's it's a neat game coming out and if you were into the series it looks like it's going to be very similar to how it has been um so it's definitely worth checking out should be out sometime in the middle of march roughly around march 21st or so so if you are a mass effect yeah march 21st for north america yeah if you are a mass effect fan and you're not just lividly pissed off at the end of three uh <laughs> and you haven't given up on the series make sure to check it out uh but that's it for that game uh moving on another game we're going to talk about coming out, a game called Sea of Thieves. I'm going to let Jay go ahead and take that one over. Go ahead, bud. All right, Sea of Thieves, um, the latest game to come out from Rare. Um, and I shouldn't say come out because it's not out yet. It doesn't have a release date set yet. It just says 2017, so we'll see because <laughs> that probably won't happen. Mm. <laughs> um, but Sea of Thieves, uh, just to give you guys like a, a background of how we, we film these podcasts or record these podcasts, we basically just like look up games that are coming out or games that have come out or things we're excited about. Um, we stumbled across the name Sea of Thieves, and I was like, oh yeah, I remember that from E3. And so I did some research on it, I looked it up, and I was like, I kind of want this game now, <laughs> so I sold myself on this game. Um, it looks like a lot of fun. Again, it's it's going to be one of those games, and this is the one thing I don't love about it. You need, you need friends to play this okay. game. You have to have a crew. Um, and it looks like uh, four people tends to be the norm. Um, I'm assuming you could probably join with a bunch of randos with voice chat or whatever, but then you have to hope that the people you get set with don't, you know, are, are on the same wavelength so as you. From, so. from what you've seen, given that it's going to be kind of a crew kind of thing, like what, what kind of gameplay are we expecting here? <clears throat> well, it's got a bunch of different... Basically, the core mechanic is you are a pirate crew and you have to track down the correct island that like you have a treasure map and all it is is an island and so you have to find that island that you have a bigger sea chart that you compare that to and you're like i think it's this island so you have to sail all the way there and you have to work together you know one person's the crow's nest on the lookout one person steering the ship another person's working the sails um kind of like uh guns over icarus style and so you have to work together to get to the island and then once you're there there's not just a giant red x like on the middle of the ground you have to explore a little bit and find it and then dig it up together and then work together to get it back to the ship while you know other people might be trying to stop you and steal the treasure so there's combat involved in it guns and cannons and swords and all that stuff and you then you have to sail to an outpost where you can sell the chest for money and then level up, I'm assuming, or something. I don't know. It's, it's probably best that none of us ever try to play this game <laughs> together, because I would presume we would not even be able to get the boat to go straight. Could you imagine, like, just me, you, John, and Fraser just, like... <laughs> Hard to port. Which way's port? It's straight, I think. Uh, uh. Hold on, I'm getting a drink. <laughs> no, dip, that's sail. We're under fire. Yeah, d just, just shoot the guns. I, I, I gotta go to yeah. the bathroom. Just just give me these five seconds, guys. <laughs> no, it's... Oh, but it looks like an interesting game. Uh, I know he said it's not coming out anytime soon because there's no release date on it, but I will say this. I'm going to be gravely disappointed if they don't make booty jokes all over the place. Uh, the uh, trailer for it, um, the <laughs> E3 trailer for it, does have a sense of comedy in it because even though Rare is not the exact same people that did, you know, Banjo Kazooie and Dewey and Donkey Kong and right. all that stuff. It's, you know, still kind of British humor and, and all that jazz. And so I, I had a few good laughs at it watching the trailer. Um, well, that's kind of a good thing. Hopefully they'll keep that comedy theme going and uh, hopefully that'll be a really good game. Be on the lookout for that Sea of Thieves sometime this year. We'll maybe try to do an update on it later if we ever get an actual date for when it's coming out. But uh, that's going to be it for this podcast episode. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you, you, all of you guys go check out Let's Jay's channel. Uh, you can check out his YouTube or his Twitch. Uh, either link will be in the description of the video. Oh, thanks, and man. as always, right. <laughs> and as always, a uh, question of the day. Uh, today's question is going to be what video game pissed you off so much for the ending? Oh, the ending. Right. Now, what I mean by this, I don't mean a game that was bad. I mean that a game that like you enjoyed and you get to the end and it just either something didn't sit right with you or it might have been a bad ending or whatever. But the game itself needed to be good enough to where you played the whole thing and liked it. Um, I know that's kind of a tricky question because usually games are fairly good about knowing better than to do a, <laughs> a bad ending. 
Uh, but for me, I, I know we talked about it earlier into this video, but it's definitely Mass Effect 3. Uh, I don't remember the last time I was that angry <laughs> at the <laughs> game when that incident happened because it's mostly because of how hard you have to work to keep things the way they are and then only for all of that to be for nothing. And you're just like, son of a... One, one could say that you tried so hard and, and got, got so, so far. But, but in, in the, the end... end <laughs> It didn't even matter. It was just a load of crap. See, Lincoln Park, they, they just know. Like, Nosferatu has nothing on Lincoln Park. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's my answer for that. Uh, Jay, Jay, do you have one that comes to mind? Mine's a little different, but it's... Um, I'm going to go ahead, and I, the only reason I'm going to say this is because I recently streamed it, <clears throat> is Hyrule Warriors. Um, I was having a ton of fun with the game. The game story wrapped up, like, in a very nice manner. Like, everything was good, everyone was happy, and then it just rebooted. And it was like, we want more levels. So the bad guy's magically alive again, and the world is going to hell again, and you have to save it again. And I was like, why? <laughs> why do I have to do this again? <laughs> so you'll play the game more. Exactly. It was like, we just want to make five more levels. You've already gone through 13, but here's five more. <laughs> just because. It, it was just, I was like, at that point, I was just sick of playing the game. I was like, I, I just want to finish this so I can be done with it. Yeah, I remember. Although the final boss fight was wicked cool. I will say that. Yeah, I do remember watching that stream a little bit and you getting rather frustrating when trying to kill uh, <laughs> Zelda and Link at the same time. Uh, OK, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, bad times. But uh, bad yeah, times. so just in the comments below, just just let us know what game kind of really irked you at the end uh, and, and possibly why, if you want to put as to not only what made you mad, but why it made you mad. Uh, but that's going to be it for today's ep podcast episode. Thank you guys for stopping by and listening. And as always, we will see y'all on the next episode. It's nice of you to warn them that we'll be there next episode. <laughs> right. Hey, we will be here. <laughs>